And Joe Doherty followed up with a question from something we talked about last week in regards to NAS and backing up your NAS device. And I mentioned in the video that I do a couple of different backup strategies using my Synology NAS as kind of the central point. So I use Hyper Backup to copy things to an external hard drive, but I also use Hyper Backup to send things up to Amazon S3. And then I mentioned that my YouTube videos here on the channel, I send to another service that Amazon runs called Amazon Glacier. And that is a very inexpensive long-term storage solution. But what I didn't mention is that it's not part of Hyper Backup and Joe was trying to find it as an option there. And it's actually in a different application that you'll find on your Synology NAS called Glacier Backup. It's actually a separate app that you have to install from their package center. And what this will do is a pretty simple backup to Amazon's Glacier service. But if you've got a lot of data to back up, this will cost you a lot less, but you don't get the encryption features. You don't get the, um, the versioning that you get with Hyper Backup. So there are some things that you don't get from this cheaper storage solution, but I use it for a last resort kind of thing that if everything is gone here, I can restore the videos because they're living in Amazon Glacier. Let me show you why Amazon Glacier is different. So to store data on Amazon S3 Glacier, you're going to pay less than half a penny per gigabyte here in the United States. You can run your own currency conversion for your particular regions there to see what the differences are, but it's very cheap as you can see. Uh, and that is versus about 2.3 cents per gigabyte using regular Amazon S3. But the difference here is that S3 is something you can access whenever you want. So if I have a file up in S3, I can go and grab it and download it right now if I wanted to. Uh, in fact, the audio version of this show that I host as a podcast, it's hosted in S3. So anytime somebody wants to download the podcast, S3 will deliver you that file. It's very convenient. Uh, but it is a more expensive storage option for that convenience. Now, Glacier being a uh, less than half a penny per gigabyte for storage actually charges you more for retrieval and retrieval is not immediate. So it's almost like they put your data on a hard drive and move it away. They kind of maybe unplug it from whatever it's plugged into. Maybe it's on tape or something. Nobody really knows exactly how Amazon Glacier stores everything, but we do know that if you want to retrieve data, uh, they're going to charge you nine cents per gigabyte for their standard retrieval service. And that will take anywhere from one to five hours to be made available to you. Uh, so my guess is that they pull it off a hard drive or tape where it's permanently stored and they make it available on a temporary basis to you so you can download it. Uh, you also need, of course, some special application to be able to retrieve that. Uh, so on the Synology NAS, that Glacier app will also retrieve the data for you too. So it's a uh, all-in-one kind of thing. But if you are doing this yourself, you'll have to code something to go out and get that data after it's been made available. Now, if you're willing to wait a little bit longer, like five to 12 hours, you can pay about a quarter of a penny per gigabyte to get your data out. Uh, but again, you won't have it immediately. You might have to wait to the next business day to have that data ready for download. But if something happened here, uh, that is probably what I would go with. Now, again, I just back up my completed videos, the thumbnail and the video description. Uh, so I have everything now stored up in Amazon Glacier. And every time I make a new video, it gets added to the mix when that backup process runs on my Synology NAS. Uh, so right now up there in the cloud, I've got about 426 gigabytes stored. And that's only costing me $1.71 a month to have that offsite backup. You can't beat that price for sure. Now you might be wondering why it's only not even half a terabyte. And the reason is, is that initially I wasn't backing up my actual outputted video. I was downloading uh, what YouTube had, which was much more heavily compressed. We've since changed that. So now I'm uploading the same video I send to YouTube. I'm sending to uh, the backup because when YouTube gets my videos, they crunch them down. Uh, and make them a lot smaller. So I never got the originals back, but I've started uh, retaining the original videos. But I don't store any of my raw footage, uh, primarily because every video I do generates about 15 to 20 gigs of raw footage that really isn't that useful any time later. I do grab B-roll footage from prior reviews occasionally, uh, but when I do that, the prior video, the completed video, has what I'm looking for. So uh, what I store up there, again, is just the completed stuff along with thumbnails and some metadata. But you can see here, it really doesn't cost all that much to store this stuff. They do charge you for early deletion. Uh, so they want you to keep the data with them for at least 90 days. And if you want to delete something sooner than that, 
Uh, they're actually going to charge you a per gigabyte deletion fee of about a penny. Uh, and that's why I don't do a lot of the backing up of my documents and stuff. The things that change often, I don't back up to Glacier because if it has to delete the old file and bring in a new one, that might rack up deletion charges. So that's why this is better for long-term archival for things that don't change as opposed to files that are constantly changing. Uh, they also charge you for requests, which can be uh, things about, you know, I need to put this file up to Glacier. That's a request. I need to get a list of files. That's a request. So they charge you uh, a nickel per 1,000 requests. And as you can see here, last month I only had 76, which I'm guessing is the number of uh, items that were placed into the backup there, which didn't end up costing me anything. So that's the pricing. I really think Glacier is a good deal, again, for archival backup for things like photos and videos and things that never change. Uh, so definitely give it some consideration if you're looking to save on your uh, backup costs. And if you don't have a NAS device, um, you should check out uh, ARQ, ARC. Uh, it's available for Mac and Windows. It's software. It will encrypt stuff before it goes out. So you have pre-internet encryption. Now you get that on the Synology NAS for hyper backup, but not with the Glacier backup. ARQ does do that. Now I, I am pretty sure ARQ still supports Glacier. They did in the past. Uh, they don't list it as one of the supported services in the product page here, but they do uh, have a support page about it. So they do have a free trial. I would give it a shot because it's a very good backup utility. It does versioning and uh, works with a number of different cloud services beyond Amazon S3. So you could actually back up to multiple cloud services if you want. Uh, definitely worth checking out. I think it's like 50 bucks to own the software. So it's a very reasonable price. And then you, of course, you got to pay for whatever storage you're using on those storage providers, but it's really good. I might check it out if you're interested in me doing a review on it. So let me know down in the comments below. It's good stuff. And again, Amazon Glacier is something that I can very much recommend given its low price. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.